Hi guys, I'm coming to you in the bed. Tomorrow is my surgery. I have to get up at 4.30 a.m. I got to be there by 5.30 a.m. And I'm a little bit scared. For those of you who don't know, I have to get a biopsy. They found like three big fibroids in my uterus. And we need to test and see if they're cancerous or not. And this is my first surgery ever. So... I'm a little bit scared. I am getting put to sleep because I initially tried to do one uh, woke and it ended up being an incomplete one and it was terrible. So I follow all the instructions. I already showered and, um, you know, got on fresh uh, pajamas and I got my clothes picked out that are loose. No eating after midnight tonight. And right now it's like 9-ish. <sighs> because my surgery is so early, I don't think that I'm going to have much of a problem. I did braid my hair before I got in the bath. And then I just put on this. Uh, it's like a do-rag knit. Hair knit. So I put that on just to kind of let my hair not mess up while I'm sleeping. I'm going to take that off. I had to remove all my jewelry. So no rings, no wedding rings, necklaces, earrings, nothing. And um, I'm just getting ready. So I'm praying that um, everything goes well. And I should be home by like 9, 10 o'clock is what I'm thinking. So, um, yeah, I'm going to let you guys know my experience once I wake up. I'm not going to film much in the hospital, obviously, because I'm nervous and I'm going to be put to sleep. So I can't film any of that anyway, but I'm going to let you know if I remember anything because I've never been put to sleep before. So I wonder what I remember, what's the last thing I remember and what's the first thing I remember when I wake up. That would be interesting to see. And then basically I'm going to be off for four days so I got four days to recover and um the instructions were to move around once every hour not to just like lay in the bed I have to get up and walk so we'll see how bad everything is once I get out but I wanted to do an update a kind of pre-surgery video I'm just trying to take it step by step because once they test the tissue or the um, fibroids it will let them know if it's cancerous or not and then I need to figure out my next steps if I want to get a hysterectomy or or what I need so yeah I'm a little bit scared and excited to get this over with so that's going to be it for now and I'll check in tomorrow with you it's morning of the surgery I'm dressed God give me strength to be strong today because I'm the biggest scary cat and um, I just need some strength like for the IVs and all that because I don't have no pain medication. So, okay. So this is me in the waiting room. I wanted to show you how it looked. It kind of looked like a cafeteria style. I thought it would have like more chairs, but it had like tables where you could eat. They did have like free coffee and tea. And then they had like some private rooms in case I needed to tell you some bad news, I guess. But this is the waiting area, and it was early. You can see behind me, the sun is just now coming up. But this is still the waiting area. They basically take, they took my husband's number, and they texted him when a nurse was going to come pick me up. And it wasn't very many people there for a surgery that day. And then here is me getting prepped. I'm ready to go into surgery. I had to take off all my clothes. I put on hospital socks. And then there's my specs. So if you are a baby like me, this part you're going to be on your own with. Like it's pre-medication. Um, so they're putting the IV in with you just being normal. And I've never had an IV put into my hand. Doesn't have a lot of fat there and it hurts. 
So I don't remember a lot of this moment right here because I was just coming out of surgery at this point. And I remember going to bed to a two-year-old that was in the surgery room next to me screaming and hollering. And I also remember waking up to that same baby. So I knew I was back to earth when I heard her cry. But oh my God, it was just crazy. I don't remember much about the surgery. I remember my doctor holding my hand and saying, I am right here. It was nice to see a familiar face. There was like four other doctors or nurse people in the room and they were putting like all these monitors and things on me. And she was like, we're not going to do anything until you're completely out. And then I was out. So when I woke up, they had to have, you had to do a couple things. You had to eat a muffin, you had to drink some water and you had to use the bathroom number one before you left the hospital. I don't know. I think I was in there maybe an hour after the surgery um, before I was able to be released. They basically put you in a wheelchair and wheelchair you out to your car. I just woke up. Okay, it's my second day after surgery and I'm at home by myself. Um, my husband had to go to work. He should be home at three. Anyway, I'm still on this doctor's shirt that I had on when I went to the hospital because I'm gonna get in the shower and the bath today because I still need to get all of surgery stuff off of me. Um, but I got up and I'm gonna make some tuna fish so that I have something for lunch. So currently I'm trying to do it as fast, as quick as possible because like I can't stand for very long. My abdominal hurts a lot. So basically I'm gonna show you what I got. Don't judge people. I'm trying to do as least dishes as possible. Yeah, I thought tuna fish would be good because I can use it. I mean, I can eat it for breakfast, lunch. I can make sandwiches. I can just eat tuna fish and crackers. So I cut up celery and onions. I put them in the biggest bowl that I have. The eggs, those are boiling now. And then I'm basically going to use all of this tuna fish. And I'm going to make some elbow noodles in there just so that it's fulling. And then that is what I'm doing for lunch today. I'm going to try to clean those dishes, but I already need to sit down. So that's kind of where we're at in day two. I'm feeling much better. And what I wanted to say is... <laughs> the surgery underwears are really, really nice. They're really stretchy. I feel like it fits like so many different body types. So I don't know. I actually love the surgery underwear. I know it's TMI if anyone else feels that way. But yeah, I'm going to be disposing of those today. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll try to show you it when it gets done. This is how my tuna came out. I'm going to eat it with crackers. And I got this punch from the Dollar Tree, but honestly, it's too sweet, but I hate to waste money. So I'm going to try to drink this. And this is what I'm having for lunch. So after your surgery, the doctors try to remove most everything that they can. Obviously, your IV area still is bleeding. So they wrap that up. Your hospital band obviously is still on you when you leave the hospital. And they left one little, I don't know operation connection piece where they monitor you so i had to get all of that off so i basically like cut that off that thing was sticky so it did move around a bit but i had to pull that up day three of recovery it's been a little rough i'm doing valve movements one and two has been difficult one just kind of comes out of nowhere can't really make it to the bathroom. I suggest wearing like just a full pajama with no panties on if you're not bleeding heavy still um, because I kept not making it to the toilet. And then number two came out just really, really hard. And it seems like I need a stool softener and my lower abdominal area is just hurting. So that is day three. I'm hoping that tomorrow feels better, but currently in some pain.
Okay, I want to talk about day four and day five. Day four was very painful. I basically sat here. I decided to take time off for the pain. I don't think it helped at all. And then I switched over to ibuprofen and that did the trick. So I started taking two ibuprofen every four hours and I seem better. So uh, yeah, day five is going great. So today I am going to actually get in the bath or the shower, wash my hair. Um, hopefully I will be back at work on Wednesday at this point. So yeah, this journey is crazy, but I'm feeling strong today and better. And we will see um, if I make it to work on Wednesday because I was supposed to go back on Tuesday, but I wasn't feeling well and I didn't want to rush it. And I just thought like I needed another day. Like I was in a lot of pain yesterday, but after taking the meds, I feel better. So yeah, I've been sitting here on this couch for five days now. Okay, guys. Okay, today is still day five. It's like 11.30 a.m eating some tuna and some crackers and some water. Okay, I wanna do kind of like a recap of this. So far. <laughs> Here is uh, how I look after I showered, did my hair looking more normal. You guys have seen me look crazy in these videos, but I kind of wanna document everything that had happened. Um, to me, if you have a very low tolerance of pain, I would take five days off work. My pain tolerance is below low. I started with no medication, didn't tie and all, and then what ultimately worked was ibuprofen for me. Everybody's body is different and what, you know, works for them works for them, but Tylenol did seem to work for me. I was taking uh, 400 uh, milligrams every like four hours or so, so not much, two pills every four hours and that seemed to work but I'm feeling so much better. I'm showered, I'm up. I did my hair for the first time in five days. So super excited about that. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I want to push myself and try to go back to work tomorrow or if I should wait to Wednesday. Um, Cause today is my first day feeling good and able to like walk around my house. I finally put the, this couch goes to a bed. It's been a bed for five days. So I finally put it back to a couch cleaned up out there. So yeah, I feel like I'm getting better. So I just wanted to give an update in case you guys, you know, are getting a biopsy and how much time you needed. So future me wanted to tell you some after surgery, um, I guess, restrictions requirements things that they say you have to do so there's no sex for two weeks you can't use cups diva cups or tampons for those two weeks only pads which is disgusting if you're one that has already moved over to tampons going back to just pads was a bloodbath you're going to be looking to see if you have any yellow or green um discharge in your pads if you do you have an infection so you will have to talk to them you want to call them if your fever is over 100.5 your diet can go back to basically anything and then you have to take gas x or some kind of laxative to soften your stool and my post-op appointment is two weeks after my actual surgery date so hopefully this journey has helped you um, so you could be more aware of what to expect if you have to get one. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for following me along. I do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.